ultimately, uh, right now, the issues facing us are that the science is limited. Uh, there are really no good peer-reviewed studies that say, okay, hey, uh, this way of using uh, uh, neuroscience to analyze commercials works and that we can predict which one will sell more product or produce uh, a greater brand loyalty. Uh, and uh, we don't really have, at least in the public realm, a validation with sales. Uh, the, uh, and that's uh, something that's really, I, I'm a direct marketing guy uh, by background, uh, and I, I was always much less interested in theory than what I could test and uh, show worked. If I put uh, used two covers, and one cover uh, generated 15% more sales. I didn't really need to uh, know why it worked. I just needed to understand that it did work, and that would be a better cover to use uh, in a larger mailing. And ultimately, I see these uh, being used for uh, ads, brands, and attitudes, obviously. Uh, products, I think, are something that are often overlooked. People always talk about analyzing ads with neuromarketing, but to me, it's a lot more uh, interesting uh, and exciting to think that you could develop a product that really lit up people's brains versus simply creating a better ad for that product. Uh, now to, uh, it's time to change gears. Uh, that's a metaphor. Um, it, took a, it, took, it, was, it took a lot of effort to find a gear shift with a clock on it. Um, you've heard about subliminal ads. Uh, if you look, there's a very faint, almost imperceptible image of the cover of uh, uh, my book that's going to be out next month. Uh, I, I might have hit it a little too hard, I guess. You can really see it, can't you? Uh, but uh, the, the reason I'm bringing that up is, uh, in talking about neuromarketing, uh, to me, an area that can be very illustrative uh, is a lot of behavioral research that's going on. Uh, we had uh, that little video from uh, Dan Ariely before. Uh, he's a, a leading researcher in that field and is really creating tremendous insights uh, that I think uh, they don't necessarily uh, replace uh, neuromarketing uh, uh, technology uh, and uh, those sorts of hard science techniques for measuring response, but to me from a marketing and advertising standpoint are, are equally important. Uh, uh, just a, a couple real quick examples here. Uh, these days everybody's talking about uh, socializing and uh, online, everyone wants to be uh, social media experts and so on. How many folks are familiar with the ultimatum game here? No? Okay, good. Uh, there are, uh, it's a very, very simple process. Uh, two subjects, uh, one is given $10 uh, that they can keep some and give the uh, remaining portion to the other subject. That second person can refuse uh, or accept the offer. If the person refuses it, then nobody gets any money. If they accept it, then they split the 10 bucks. Uh, pretty, pretty simple game, and you would think from a rational economic standpoint that the second person uh, would take any non-zero offer because, hey, even if it's only a dollar, it's a dollar more than you had. Uh, and, but in fact, it's not really the way it works. Uh, in a normal ultimatum game like that, uh, about half of the deals offered are fair deals, and that would be somewhere between a 40-60 split either, either way. Those are considered fair. Uh, and fully a third end in failures. No deal. Uh, what uh, some research has found was by simply having the subjects converse a little bit before they played, and they weren't talking about the game or strategy or uh, what would be acceptable, they were talking about unrelated topics, uh, that the number of fair deals went up to 83%, uh, and the number of failures was cut in half to 17%. So just that little bit of socializing uh, before uh, created really a, a very different dynamic uh, uh, when they played the game. Uh, and I think this has implications uh, all over the place, uh, uh, particularly in sales where uh, you uh, don't want to get down to business uh, right away because uh, you have a less a lower chance of achieving a deal. Uh, and uh, whether this translates fully into the social media world or not uh, isn't clear. That work hasn't been done. But to me, it's, it's a very uh, uh, simple little piece of uh, research uh, that I think is very telling from a uh, sales and marketing standpoint. Uh, looking at this uh, image of currency here uh, has primed everybody in this room to be more greedy and selfish. Uh, an experiment showed that uh, when people are primed with that kind of image uh, versus a, something neutral like a fish, uh, they were about half as likely to help uh, an experimenter uh, during the course of the experiment. Uh, they didn't know they were being measured for that, but uh, they uh, were 
much less likely to help merely, and they weren't even aware that they were primed. It was uh, either a poster on the wall or a screensaver uh, on a, ta a nearby table. Uh, very, in a similar example, uh, people were primed with either a neutral image or a currency image, uh, and they ended up uh, sitting farther apart, uh, like 40% farther apart when uh, they were primed with currency. So uh, that, that has a lot of significance for uh, all kinds of marketers, particularly nonprofit marketers. Uh, what kind of imagery you want to avoid uh, when you're making your pitch, when you're, uh, what you want to put in your ads. Uh, putting the wrong thing in there could prime people in exactly the wrong way. Uh, one, one last uh, example that I find particularly uh, fascinating uh, is, and you're not expected to read this, but what this is is a uh, description of an exercise program. It starts out, tuck your chin into your chest and then lift your chin upward as far as possible, six to 10 repetitions and so on. Uh, the same text is uh, in a simple font, an Arial-like font, and then a brushy font uh, underneath. Uh, uh, and subjects were asked, they were shown one of these uh, and asked how long the exercise program would take. Uh, the folks who saw it in the simple font said 8.2 minutes. The ones who read the exact same text in the brushy font thought it would take 15 minutes, almost twice as long. Uh, again, huge implications for advertising. You don't just turn your graphic designer loose and say, okay, uh, you know, choose what you think looks best. Uh, there's, there are places where a complex font may actually be good for your marketing program if you're perhaps trying to push uh, something uh, that is uh, very expensive or complicated uh, that can actually add an air of complexity to it and difficulty. But uh, normally, uh, simple fonts are a lot better, particularly if you're wanting somebody to do something. Fill out a form, make it simple. Uh, that is the uh, future of uh, market research and, uh, to me, all of advertising and marketing. Uh, obviously, we've gained a huge amount of knowledge over the decades that this has been going on, uh, but now I think with tools uh, from neuromarketing uh, and also from behavioral studies, we're uh, finding out why some things work, and it's going to reduce some of those failures. Uh, if we can get rid of some of that 40% of totally wasted ad dollars, and uh, also, as uh, someone mentioned earlier, all the product failures out there because uh, we didn't really know uh, what consumers uh, wanted, and not to mention all the muddled vision issues, uh, that's going to be a huge contribution uh, that can be made uh, to the economy. And uh, again, I think uh, what's happening here at the university is, is really exciting because uh, we'll finally have uh, an uh, academic rationale for what's, uh, what's going on. So thank you very much.